What's up everyone and welcome back to yet another video. I really hope you enjoyed the last video where we checked out different ways of gathering influence as Hausa. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. But today we have a bit of a different video. Today we're checking out the Akan build. Now for all of you who doesn't know, Akan are a mask type unit with area of effect damage that is actually really good in mass. And today we're gonna check out the Akan strat where we try to get as many Akan and Falks as possible and we do kind of a FF timing push. Here I have a recording where we're up against India and India is actually gonna try to rush us and I thought this was just a really good example of how you can use the Akan FF but how you can adapt, adopt it into well different opponents and uh, different matchups because in this game we're gonna be under a lot of pressure which means we're gonna need to adapt and turn it into more of a semi FF. So, of course, we start off by selling at 150 wood, like always. Uh, so, right now where it reaches 150, I sell for wood, I research the village dogs, and I can go ahead and make a house. Uh, now, I'm just looking for treasures in the meantime, and for this build order, we're actually gonna build a palace as soon as we age up, which means that both gold and wood are actually really good. And, of course, XP is really good as well because we're gonna need that XP to send in the Gananchi card uh, before going up to H3. And once we go H3, we want, of course, XP to send those really good H3 shipments. Now, unfortunately, Manhats are actually really far away, which was a bit unfortunate. On this map, however, there is blueberries, so we ha actually have the same gather yield on the blueberries as you do on the hunts, but because I did the village dogs upgrade, I actually have slightly better gather rate on the elks right now. So I'm just gonna try to hunt them in. Uh, of course, I should have uh, been more on the ball in the beginning and done it. So we're gonna choose the uh, 1v1 FF deck right here, and we're gonna start as with any house of strategy with the three villagers. And I think this is just such a crucial shipment for all house of strategies, especially now that we don't have the uh, uh, villager shipment H2. So you really need this uh, shipment to just start getting your eco going. So we're gonna target a classic 15 mil age up and hopefully we can get away with it. Uh, you should always be able to do the 15 mil age up if you don't have any food treasures. Uh, if you do uh, get the village dogs and you just uh, keep building villagers. So in the meantime, I'm just taking some treasures here uh, while we wait for that food to gather up. So there's a bit of low in the action here. So I'm just gonna speed up the video just a little bit. And there we go, there we built our 15th villager, so I'm actually just gonna wait to gather up that last food and we're gonna age up with Moroccans. We're aging up with the Moroccans because they give the XP and of course also the Mosque, which also gives the XP trickle. And that's gonna be really crucial to get both the Gananchi card out because we wanna use the accounts and also to get shipments out once we hit H3. Now you can also age up with Songhai to get that 300 gold. But in my experience, it just isn't as good because that means that your uh, Gananchi card is going to be really late and you don't really have any good shipment upon aging up. So now that the age up is in queue, we can actually put all of the wills onto wood because we want to gather 300 wood uh, and then uh, a bit of gold and a bit of food before aging up. Because as soon as I age up, I want to put out a palace and the palace costs 200 wood and 200 gold. So we're going to need 200 wood for the palace and then 100 wood for a house. So I just got my second shipment and I want to send the house a kingdom builder. Uh, and the House of Kingdom Builder, of course, gives a better bonus if it arrives once you're in H2. So you want to send it right after the green bar passes the end. So I'm actually a bit late here, but it's it's fine. And I'm putting down a house now. And as you can see, I have the 200 wood, which is going to be crucial for putting up the palace. And I'm moving back with my explorer because as soon as we hit the next stage, we want to sell our cattle for gold. And then we, have afford, uh, we can actually afford the palace. And we want to get the palace out as soon as possible because we expect him to come with units. So because I scouted the forward Agra, I'm really expecting him to go Sipoy Gurkha and I'm expecting him to come quite soon. So if you if you are in that type of situation, then you really want to put some extra villagers onto the building so you can actually finish it in time. Now, unfortunately, this university won't actually reach the TP, which is a bit sad. 
Now in a typical situation you would send 700 gold here, but because we're expecting Sepoy Gurkha we actually need to go the Fulani, which is totally fine and if you're, if you're up against an opponent who puts a lot of early pressure and they go uh, heavy on the infantry, maybe you scouted a barracks, then it's always a good idea to first send in the 8 Fulani because you just get a ton of value from them, as, you, as we will see soon. And it's absolutely crucial that you really get in your villagers in time. If you lose too many villagers here, then the game is of course over. So so at this point of the game, you can see he has committed into making a lot of musketeer type units. And we also expect some Gurkha to come because uh, that's just what India tends to do. And that means it's just quite safe for us to go Fulani right now. And at this point, we just want the Fulani to survive for as long as possible. So we just try to kite them. As soon as they start walking towards us, we just kite them. And then as soon as he starts walking back, we just follow him and try to harass him. And you can see really the power of that fort and how much value it's actually getting us because it allows us to keep him at a distance at this point uh, when he doesn't have a huge mass. Meanwhile, we try to macro for the H app, so we're trying to gather a lot of food actually. And now we can go ahead and send the 700 gold next. And we don't want to gather too much gold because we can actually always sell a cattle to get that last bit of gold. So I'm just trying to focus as many villagers as possible to go on the hunt so we can get that food up quicker. So now there's a bit of a low in the action again and we're just trying to save up those resources to do the age up. Now we could get away with building a barracks at this point but at the same time we want to use all the resources to age up so there isn't really a point to build it just yet. And we can just wait for the livestock wood value to uh, go up even more. Meanwhile, make sure you're herding in the hunts so you don't run out of hunts. And now, as you can see, the 700 gold is coming in. So I'm going to put a few bills to gather the gold. So now we can see him creeping up here and unfortunately I lose another will and this time he's actually added some Gurkha and this will help him to counter my Flani more effectively. However the Flani still trade quite well as he do soft counter the Gurkha. And once again we just try to kite him and just try to back down, take some units here and there and as you can see it's quite important that as many of the Flani survive as possible. Because right now, because we're going for that HF, we don't have a barracks, we just don't have any reinforcements in sight. Now finally, I go ahead and trade a bit to do the HF. Now unfortunately I traded one too many, uh, but as you can see I'm getting the HF in right now. We're actually going to go ahead and HF with the Akan. Now the Akan is going to grant us a 6 Akan and Kobias, and those are just going to help build our Akan mass, which we will need as soon as we HF. And what makes this HF so good is the fact that the Akan actually shadow tech. So as soon as we hit that H3, they're already H3 upgraded units. Now uh, with our next shipment, we go ahead and send the Gananchi card. And this is going to allow us to start training Akan. So our objective right now is just trying to get as many Akan out as possible. Because uh, with their area of effect damage, they actually stack really well uh, once you start getting a few of them. And now we can see he actually has quite a big mass of Gur Gurkha and Sepoy. So I'm just trying to stay away and just trying to buy myself some time and just picking off units here and there. So fortunately for me, he goes to the right side and I don't actually have any villagers there. And now we start seeing one of the houses, which is actually perfect because that means that we can start uh, picking off some units. But as soon as he starts following us, we just back down and we just try to waste his time as much as possible. And here is actually when I make my first mistake and at this point you should actually try to get the barracks up. You can see our wood value is actually quite high and we're getting the Gananchi in, which means we want to start uh, training Akan as soon as possible. So at this point we have worn his units down and we're getting the Kananchi so now we can actually start engage and make sure you have your explorer and try to snare with explorer it's just huge because the skirms do counter uh, the mask of course but if you manage to snare and get up close then as you can see the mask actually do really well against even the Gurkhas. And here now we have some reinforcement Sipoy and but as you can see we're still getting quite a good value here. 
Meanwhile, we're starting to reach that H3. If you want to, you could actually use the tech in the university that makes uh, the H up even faster. But in this case, we want to make some Falks, so we're going to try to save on that influence. So now we just hit H3 and you can see the Akan and Kobias coming out. And I went ahead and sold a cattle here because we want to build a war camp so we can start training Akans. And then we want to of course also add some houses because we're going to need housing. Now we should definitely have a lot more people on food than gold but uh, in this point they just have way too many on food. Uh, as the Akan actually costs more food than gold of course. And then also I can go ahead and sell a cattle to get even more Akans out. Meanwhile we want to send in the thousand influence and do the imported cannons tech. To get our Falks up. Now alternatively if you go for a straight FF and went for the 700 gold first then you wouldn't have as much influence here and it would probably be more worth it to just go for the Lefidi and then just snare with the Lefidi while catching up with the Akans. But because I needed those 8 Fulani in this game I have actually gathered up a bit more influence at this point because my university has been sitting longer and that means I can actually go for the imported text and actually get quite a few cannons out together with the 1000 influence shipment. So while we wait, just try to get as many account out as possible because you're gonna need accounts to actually protect your phallics once they get out. And as you can see, now the 1000 influence comes in, so I'll start to gather that and start queuing up a falc. Now, if I had done this a little bit better, I would have actually uh, queued up the falc even earlier so that it would come out even faster, but uh, it's gonna be okay. And also, if you need housing, just sell a cattle for wood and start building houses. Now I don't really want to engage him at this moment because uh, he will probably take down my army at this point because he has those Gurkhas in the mass. So I'm just trying to avoid them staying behind the fort. And because those Falks cost 500 influence each, we're just going to try to save up as much influence as possible to just get the maximum amount of Falks. And now that they're almost popping out, we move up our Musketeers to protect the Falconets. And as you can see, uh, we can just try to focus fire the fire from the Falconets onto his infantry. And then we just try to deal with the uh, close combat with the Akans. And as you can see behind this, we actually uh, survive with most of the Akan, which is gonna be just great for pushing. And we even have pretty good influence generation, and we're reaching that moment to be able to afford even another Falconet. So after this, it's just a matter of building more Falcs, expanding your universities, and just keep massing those accounts. So taking a look at the build order, this is roughly what you want to send in this particular order. As you can see, there are a lot of options once you go H3. And if you go H3 really fast, then you might want to opt for the Lefidi Knights instead, just to get that tempo and get units out quickly. Uh, the Lefidi Knights are also really good if you're being pressured. Similarly, if you're being pushed with the Falks, then it's probably better to go for the Cannoneers, so you can try to snipe the cannons with the Cannoneers. And then once you get the units out, you can go ahead and send the Native Warriors upgrade card and of course the Griot's Area of Effect cards as to really good. And then you also have some eco cards like the 5 Villagers and 5 Griot's, which serves really well together with the Area of Effect upgrade for the Griot's. Also, the card Loyal Warriors now after the patch actually reduce the cost of building accounts in the barracks, which is also really neat in long games. And furthermore, it also reduced the cost of shipment that cost influence. Unfortunately, it doesn't reduce the cost of Falconets though. So that was a bit of an overview of the Akan strat in a ranked game and I hope it was helpful to get a feeling on how you can use Hausa to actually play some one-on-one games on the ladder. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.